Hey everyone, Sergio with the Rideshare Guy with another episode of Behind the Wheel. Um, today I'm joined by Jeffrey from Austin, Texas. Good morning. How are you, Jeffrey? Doing great, Sergio. How are you? Uh, doing well. Jeffrey is a longtime viewer of the channel and um, I wanted to do actually a Behind the Wheel with him for a while, but then I think uh, the timing worked out perfect um with this so jeffrey tell us a little bit about yourself what you did before uh getting into the gig economy all that good stuff yeah sure so uh i was in corporate america for 20 plus years uh did my corporate job i was with a um high-tech company uh that manufactured semiconductor capital equipment uh did very very well with that for for many many years and then eventually got laid off um I also had become allergic to staff meetings and status reports, so I simply decided I didn't want to go back. Uh, thought I would try rideshare. Have been doing that for, I think, a little over four years, and I'm at about uh, almost eleven thousand trips on Lyft, and about uh, no, uh, more than seven thousand on Uber, and maybe a hundred, hundred and fifty on rides. So, uh, done it for a little while. Okay, so uh, we'll call you a veteran then. Um, <laughs> um, you know, I mean, it's quite a switch going from corporate America with a very lucrative job, obviously, with protections and employee rights and uh, everything else going on um, to uh, driving Uber and Lyft, right? Um, so tell me uh, why. I mean, uh, I understand people get tired of corporate gigs, but it seems like you're not going back to corporate America. Yeah, well, I mean, I've had uh, I've had some issues I don't really want to go into on camera, but basically I've had some health issues and I'm getting to be at a certain age where, honestly, I don't know that corporate America really wants me back. Um, but I started to look back at my corporate career and what I had done and what I had accomplished. And I was, you know, I was proud of it. But at the same time, it's uh, it's difficult. And I'd had my share of corporate politics and I was kind of done with that. So I decided to try rideshare mainly because I just wanted to keep um uh, some money coming in. I wanted to see what it was like. And this was back at a time when obviously it was much different. Uh, it was more, you were able to be uh, a little bit more profitable, I think, uh, easier. So, and I just decided that ultimately I was happier because I wasn't having all those corporate political conversations all the time that kind of wear you down. Um, yeah. My day was taking people from point A to point B. And generally speaking, they were pretty great people and pretty happy to get a good service and i found that i was actually much happier uh kind of being out of that other rat race so it was good for me yeah i i agree a lot of people do it um one of the reasons is exactly what you described um i mean with all the amount of trips i'm assuming i can consider you a full-time driver then like how, yeah, many hours be, a week, how many hours a week do you drive uh between 40 and 50 um although it's gotten tougher there's times when i'll grind it out to I usually do it more because there's a there's a number I want to make a day. Um, okay. And if I do that a little earlier, I make quit a little earlier, but between 40 and 50, although it's getting tougher. Yeah, you're in Austin, so I do keep track of uh, Uber's um, in-app messaging that is sent out to drivers uh, as far as earnings are concerned. Um, I mean, Austin is not one of the better, better markets, obviously. Um, you know, I, I've seen numbers anywhere between 17 to $24 per online hour, including tips and incentives for Austin. Um, uh, why do you think that is? I mean, it is actually, it's probably one of the bottom five markets from what I see after collecting info on about hundred cities so far. Um, why do you think that is? Um, well, I'm, Austin used to be a phenomenal market. And I think the main reason, and it's what you guys have touched upon over and over again, is oversaturation. I mean, you know, within two and a half hours of Austin, you have Dallas, you have uh, Houston, you have San Antonio, which is even closer. You have Fort Hood, which is the largest military base in the United States. All of these individual drivers often come into Austin. Uh, so we are massively, massively oversaturated. So I think that's really the main, the, the main driver of that. Right. So basically the pie is staying the same, the, the demand pie and the uh supply basically the you know the driver headcount is uh through the roof i mean we've been talking about this issue you don't maybe you don't want to touch upon it but i would i wouldn't hesitate to ask you is um you know we do see a lot of um uh, illegal accounts out there okay and uh look i'm i'm an immigrant myself you know i came to the country and did well but 
um, doing something illegally, um, I think is, is to me, is like uh, adding to oversaturation, actually. Do you have any opinions about that? Do you see any, any of that out there when you're driving? I mean, I, I think there has to be a certain amount of it. How much? It's it's almost impossible to know. I do know that the markets are massively oversaturated. And I think the main reason is, you know, despite what you may or may not hear in the, the media, I, I think the economy is not doing well. And the reason I think that is probably the, the biggest untapped uh, economic metric out there. When Uber goes from four and a half million drivers to six million drivers, is that because the economy is good? I, I don't I don't think so. So yeah. that's driving the oversaturation because people are just trying to pay bills. You know, they're trying to take care of their families. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, you know, I hear these executives come out and blow out these numbers. You know, it's not, you know. I mean, year over year, um, headcount uh, on the Uber platform alone went from five to six and a half million. That's 30% increase. And that's because it's just super lucrative to drive Uber or drunks around, right? I mean, you know, there are some good, there are cities that are doing really well, but uh, still comes with risks. But um, so um, what kind of car do you drive, by the way? So I just switched. I'm driving a uh, 2024 Tesla Model Y. I used wow. to drive uh, a Chrysler Town & Country 2011 minivan, loved it. As far as I was concerned, back in the day before the pandemic, that car printed money. Yep. It was great. Uh, and then it developed some phantom electrical problems, so I couldn't keep it going anymore. So I went to a 2019 Dodge Grand Caravan, and then I had to replace a transmission and a catalytic converter, all very costly. Yeah. So to kind of keep things moving, I, I rented a Model 3, and I decided to test out the market, see what it was like learn how many trips I could I could do, what kind of trips, how to extend the range, all the things, and then ultimately decided to uh, put a Model Y into service. Okay. Um, so, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I, I'm sure you have your reasons why you would buy a new car, I mean, new EV, actually, um, you know, to do a ride share. Obviously, you're not using it solely for a ride share. Obviously, you have a family, you have, you have kids. You know, you have needs to for personal transportation, but you do drive 40, 50, sometimes 60 hours a week. So the car is basically mostly going to be used for right here, right? Yeah, that's correct. So for me, though, I, I look at it. I mean, I know all the metrics you guys teach and talk about, and uh, I'm no different. I, I do care about my per hour rate. But for me, um, it's much more about per mile. And, okay. you know, I'm trying to minimize the amount of miles I put on the car and maximize the profit. So for me, the reason I chose the Tesla and particularly the black Tesla Model Y was because you, you've said it many times, if there's no cherries to pick, it's hard to pick cherries. But with this vehicle in this market, um, there are cherries to pick. You have to have a vehicle that can qualify to to find those cherries. And so the different modes that I can drive in uh, make it such that I can deal with a certain amount of idle time. That That's fine because the car's not moving. It's, I'm less likely to get into an accident. Uh, I'm not depreciating it as much because it's not moving. And yep. when my car does move, my goal, and it's a difficult goal, I get it, but my goal is to, for the week, average $3 a mile. Okay. Um, and if I can do that, I'll have money to put back uh, save some of those profits and be thinking about, you know, the future. Essentially, I feel like I bought myself some time okay. uh, to be able to get some of the rides and, and and stay profitable. Okay. So how long did you have the car so far, the Tesla Model Y? So I put it uh, on the platforms, uh, I think the first week of February. Okay. Uh, and, you know, it, it, it's been difficult because this is a slow time of year after, um, you know, after New Year's, after it, it kind of dies out and then you get a little bit of a boost around Valentine's Day and then it kind of dies down. But our weather in Austin is pretty nice this time of year. So um, it hasn't been as good as I've I've hoped, but uh, I think, you know, I, I'm, I'm optimistic for the first time in a long time okay. um, because it was really, really difficult for a while. Yeah, I mean, attitude is major part of in anything, you know, I mean, whatever you do, corporate or, uh, you know, uh, ride share. And um, I know a lot of people don't pay attention to it, but, you know, there's burnout involved in this industry as well. I mean, you know, look, we're not going to sugarcoat it. These companies do hammer you uh, through the algos, through all the 
fishy and shady stuff that they pull and then you know for an intelligent man like you i mean these games were being played in corporate america now it's just being played through the app and you know uh burnout is real but attitude is also very important you got to have the right attitude to do right here 40 50 hours a week and it seems like you're on your way so let's talk a little bit about um i mean i know there are incentives that's probably one of the reasons you chose the tesla model y through the uber uh app or the company um to, to walk me through about your purchasing process of tesla model y yeah i mean i i wrote an article at the rideshare guy and, and not nearly as good at writing as you are but i wanted to try to document that process and um hopefully i did an okay job but the point was it, it's it's a much different buying process than any car i've ever bought in my entire life i much prefer it um, everything is done online and then you do it through the app. And, and that was, uh, you can read the article and, and see all the features for that. It was, it was pretty amazing. But I, I think beyond that, um, what, you know, what I learned from the process, uh, I, I don't know to this day if I did the right thing purchasing, purchasing this car. Um, it's a risk. And like any business and anything you do in life, there are risks and hopefully there are rewards. Uh, so hopefully I put myself in a position to to be more successful. I don't think I would recommend to anybody to do it. Um, I, you know, it, I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I could do it. Uh, and for me, for now, at this point in my life, it, it made the most sense given what my other options were. Um, but it's it's definitely a risk. And uh, I live with the same risk that every rideshare driver does with unjust deactivation, with getting into an accident and all these kind of things. So um, hopefully I made the right decision and time will tell. I can tell you that it, uh, it was a fairly easy buying process. And uh, for anybody who wants to buy an electric vehicle, I would consider it depending on you know what your needs are. For me and rideshare in this market, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, I mean, so you let's talk a little bit about the minor details of the sure. of the deal that you went through. Obviously, you have the federal tax credit, right? Um, that was applied, and then I, I don't know about Austin or Texas in general. I'm not sure if they're as friendly as California is towards EVs or not, but <laughs> I can imagine. Wow. And uh, you know, we have many more different uh, uh, state and tax credits in California, so. You know, give us like, if you don't mind, give us the purchase price or the sticker price, if there is such a thing these days anymore, um, yeah. of the car and then all your discounts and what the car costs you, actually. Yeah. So the the sticker price, if you will, on the website for the car was like $46,000. They now are set up to apply the tax credit at purchase. So that comes right off the top. Uh, and we can talk about this later, but I was trying to take advantage of the Uber, uh, at least in the back of my mind, the Uber yeah. promotion, where if you do 100 trips, it's $1,000. And to this day, I still don't know if I've qualified for that, even though I followed all the instructions, but we'll put that aside. So they take the uh, 7,500 right off the top. Um, and then I financed it separately. Uh, I had a fairly significant down payment that I was able to transfer because I sold my previous vehicle and I had saved up some money. So yeah. I'm financing about, I want to say about $12,000 of this vehicle. Uh, so I went from renting at around 500 a week uh, to my payment is around, uh, it, it's under 250. It's uh, run, a little bit less than 250 a month, which yeah. I plan to pay about 500 a month. And then the real sticker shock was um, insurance, because obviously, you know, we live in an inflationary economy and everything's gone up. So the insurance for this vehicle in this market right now is around 300 a month which is significant yeah. but even so uh you know you add those two things together and uh i i feel like given what i can make on a weekly basis i'm i'm i i improve my situation yeah absolutely i mean 500 a week to 500 a month right i mean <laughs> uh yeah you know, that's automatic 1500 in your pocket from rentals to i mean you know to ownership Obviously, yeah. not everybody's going to be able to put such a big down payment to lower their payments to that level. But I think rentals do have their space. If you're just in between jobs, you're going to do a ride share for three months. Yeah. Don't use your car. Go rent it. Go hard. Do 70 hours a week. Make your money and then move on. But if you're going to do a ride share for a long time, the, the, your path is absolutely the correct way to go. Um so you 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 know, previously you were just mentioning that you're trying to work for like three dollars a mile. 
I mean, we know that's not possible on Uber X and Lyft standard. We just know unless there is some ridiculous incentive, which right. I'm pretty sure Austin is the same as LA. They've cut those or reduced those or completely eliminated those anyway. Um, so how are you getting? Are you getting to that three? Because I'm pretty sure you, you smart man, you figured out your cost per mile and all that good stuff, right? Well, yeah. So I, I mean, you, you have the ability to operate on more platforms, uh, more tiers of service. So, I mean, Uber Comfort is not the greatest, but it's okay. And then you bring in Uber Premier, which the car qualifies for. So that's actually really quite good. And in Austin, there's a lot of those trips. Um, and then if the car is black, obviously you have Lyft Black. Uh, Lyft Extra Comfort is just not really worth talking about in this market. It's really disappointing. Um, the only way I'll drive Lyft Comfort is if there's like a, what do they call it, turbo? There's a 30, let's say a 30% turbo. Uh, maybe I'll do that. Or they have, often they'll do like $8 per trip extra. You know, I'll do that. Oh, you know, but you know how they how that works, right? But uh, because yep. I've gotten so many screenshots with that turbo, then I look at the uh, basics of the trip. You know, base fare is being lowered while they're in sure. one pocket. You know, they're putting yeah. it in one of your pockets and taking it out of the other pocket. But it yeah. remains to be seen how that works. So you are able to do the higher platforms. Now we know Lyft has and Uber as well, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Is uh, Lyft got rid of Lyft Lux? Um, a few months ago, right? right? And that hurt a lot of drivers, right? Yeah. And um, are you concerned that you have no control, basically? What if Lyft tomorrow ends Lyft Black or Premier goes away or something happens? And now what, right? Did you think it, about yeah, that before I mean, your that, purchase? Sure. So that's, you know, that's a possibility. Um, it's always a possibility, but so are the other possibilities of, you know, unjust deactivation or an accident. So Right now, I just tried to put myself in the best situation I could, realizing that this is this is my path forward for a while. Yeah. And, you know, if, if those things happen, those things happen, and I'll have to figure out another plan. But for now, um, you know, I have some time to be able to find those cherries, pick them, stay profitable, try to bank some profits, and, you know, hopefully put myself in a better situation going forward. Right. I mean, so you did what you're doing now is that basically you're cherry picking to the point that quality over quantity maybe before you were all quantity doing incentives and things like that so um let's talk a little bit about this major issue that we're facing now or a, a lot of full-time ev drivers are facing right and uh this news actually just broke um, a couple of days ago um and uh uber is lowering the ev credit um that's been in existence for i don't know maybe a couple three years now right uh which was a dollar per trip on all platforms i don't think they did it on black in florida but i uh you know i don't want to miss you know uh misrepresent anything but i know it was a dollar with a four thousand dollar cap a year right so now they changed the goalpost again they moved the, well i'm not even going to say i think they removed the goalpost let's talk a little bit about that i'm sure you had that in your app and since you had your Tesla for since February, I, I'm pretty sure you were getting that dollar credit, right? Dollar promo. Yeah, um, well, I was, I mean, I was very aware of it because I rented the Tesla three for a long time. So I, 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 that's a great, it was a great credit. It worked out really well. It was on every trip, all that kind of stuff. It made the difference on some trips for sure. Certainly the small ones, because I do short, I do short ones for high profit. Um but yeah, for me in this market, and given the fact that Lyft in my market has no EV credit whatsoever, uh, I won't make I won't be able to make that money up back on Lyft. So it's just a flat fifteen hundred dollar haircut for me, no matter how you look at it. And it will make a difference in some of the trips I don't take. Um, those people won't get trips from me. I'm sure they'll get them from somebody else because it's oversaturated. But uh, it's going to eat into uh, my ability to be, yeah, to be profitable because it will eventually you know, every every month it's going to be fifteen hundred dollars that I I can't make because they took that. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, you know, from four thousand a year to twenty five hundred a year is obviously exactly fifteen hundred dollars, and then, um, you know, uh, that's that goes to show you how unpridictable this game is because as rideshare drivers we have no control. Look, I've known you for a while. I enjoy, you know, conversing with you, but um, we have a few more minutes remaining. So um, give us, you know, I always ask this to every behind the wheel uh, um, guest. Um, give me two things you like about right chair currently standing and give me two things you don't like about right chair. Uh, so, I, I mean, the standard answer is uh, freedom and flexibility. 
Uh, and, and I'm like everybody else that that's important to me. Although I will say it's tougher to, to have that be the reason you do it because like we talked about with not being as many cherries to pick, sometimes uh, you can only drive the hours you have, not the hours you want. And because we're busy and we have families and we have issues um, you know, it used to be, you could go out anytime and do pretty well. Um, there are times certainly where you could do better than other times, but generally you could do pretty well. Now it's, if you're not willing to set aside a certain amount of time at the right time, um, it's very, very difficult. So I do still appreciate the freedom and the flexibility. And honestly, I'm much happier because I don't have the stresses of, of, you know, corporate life. And there are a lot of stresses for that. A lot of benefits, but a lot of stresses. And overall, I would say I'm, I'm happier because of that. I guess I would lump everything that I don't like into ride share. Um, I, I don't like all the gaslighting. I, I, I would rather them just be straightforward with everybody because we know if they could replace us tomorrow with all autonomous vehicles, they would do it. So please don't tell me how much you care about drivers because it's clear that you don't. And just don't talk about that. Because every time I turn around, you're taking money out of my pocket and putting it in your pocket. So I just that just wears on me to, to no end. I get that these companies are innovative and I appreciate to have the ability to be able to make some money and uh, all of those things for sure. But it's constantly being told, um, you know, how much they care. And then every time I turn around, they take away this program or that program or the other program. And it's obvious that they don't. Do you believe one company is a little different than the other or they're both the same thing for you? I, I, I've told people in the car ask me that all the time. And I say, uh, what is my typical response? Um, Lyft does everything Uber does. They just do it worse. So I think they're both pretty bad. I prefer uh, Dara because I think it's obvious that he is sort of a, a bit of an assassin. And I think uh, David Risher is more of a sneaky assassin. He 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 smiles at you, um, but yeah, the way what's happened with Lyft in this market, I don't have many nice things to say. Yeah. Um, okay. So a um, couple of things you liked, obviously, and a couple you don't like. And you know, um, look, I, I I'm going to title this. I mean, I'm, I'm saying it now, but people will have to watch it all the way to the 20th minute to figure it out. You know, will you buy a new uh, EV? Um, to do right here, which exactly what you did. And you are so honest enough and to tell our audience that you still don't know if you did the right thing or not. When will you know? Do you know when you will know? I mean, I think once I roll the numbers up, maybe six months to a year in, um, I will say, look, I'm, I'm agnostic on EVs. I really don't care one way or the other. I know there's some positives. I know there's some negatives. Um, I will say as one person who is agnostic on EVs, I like driving the car. I really, really do. And I think for rideshare particularly, I like it. I don't know that I would like it just as my personal car to do normal, you know, commuting type things. But for this type of business and this type of situation, I like it a lot. It works really, really well. The stuff I don't like about it's pretty minor. Um, and, you know, I'm working my way through that. But uh, for now, I, I, I should have my head examined. I, I really don't know if I did the right thing. Um, I'm hopeful. Uh, and, you know, like all business, there's risk. So I, I took my risk and we'll see how it comes out. Absolutely. There is risk and reward and everything. And uh, look, just the fact that you're out of the grind of doing 50 cent a mile trips. OK, because that, that that's just not financially bad. That's mentally bad. You know, yeah. Offer after offer, you're getting pounded with this. You know, we call it garbage. <laughs> uh, yeah. It plays tricks on you unless you're one of these people who just have the the attitude that, okay, uh, I'm going to go out there and make 200 bucks today. It may take me 12 hours. Tomorrow it may take me eight hours, whatever the algo decides. Right. Well, well I know yeah. you're not one of those types and it plays tricks in your head and then you just get burned out faster. So what do yeah. you say about that? I mean, yeah, I know Austin market is not great. It's, you know, and, and it wears on you. So you it know, does. You and, and you know, nobody can be profitable 50, 60 cents a mile. It's craziness. It's really craziness that that's where we're at. Um, but in Austin, at least in this market, there's a lot of trips that are two miles for seven bucks. If you're on the right tier, you can do two and a half miles for eight bucks. You can do three miles for nine bucks. Like those exist. They're not glamorous. They're not amazing. But at that level, people also will often tip you. My tip rates are pretty good. So it's it's also the tips, which 
you know, a lot of the people struggling to to take a ride and, you know, it's costing them a lot of money and the driver's getting 50 cents a mile, 60 cents a mile. They'd love to get a tip, but some of these people that are doing these, they, they can't afford to tip. So you end up not getting the tips either. So you get a little more tips, which helps. So those trips exist. Yeah. Um, so we, we have just a couple of minutes to go. But uh, at the end, I always ask our guests to give our audience some advice. It doesn't have to be ride share advice. It's any type of advice, life advice, whatever it is, the floor is yours. Uh, well, I, I decided when I started doing this um, that I needed to kind of change my attitude because, you know, like a lot of people, you get in the car and you get wound up and you get, you know, you got to get to the next trip and you're always in a hurry. Um, you just got to let all that stuff go. You're going to be confronted with things on the road you didn't expect to see. There's going to be bad drivers. There's going to be all kinds of situations. And you just have to let all that stuff go. And you just have to realize you can't beat the traffic. You just have to coexist with it. Give everybody a, a safe ride, a comfortable ride, just like you would want to drive your mother somewhere. And hopefully it'll be appreciated. And, you know, I've, I've driven... Uh, some of the most successful people, I've driven people who clearly are homeless and other people have paid for their trip. So I always try to give people a little bit of grace because you don't know what's going on in their life. You spend a little bit of time with them and, and you send them on their way. So you just kind of have to change your mind a little bit and uh, be willing to put up with some stuff and do the best you can every day. Yeah, I mean, that's such great advice. And, you know, I forgot to ask you, but I'm going to ask you, we'll spend a couple of extra minutes here. Um, you've done it for four years, right? Do you have any plan B's? Do you, uh, I mean, will you ever get into corporate again or in some, or maybe your own business, right? Are you building something towards some a plan B of yours, of your own? Doesn't have to be corporate, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you always have to be thinking about that. And that's the one thing I think that probably got me into trouble in, in, uh, corporate America is I wasn't really thinking enough about the next thing. So it really doesn't matter if you're in rideshare, you're in corporate America, um, you've always got to be finding what is your next thing, or at a minimum, how can you how can you become more valuable? Uh, always become more valuable because then you will always have uh, you'll always have options. Yeah. Well, uh, here's Jeffrey. Um, you know, I may visit Austin soon, so there are some things happening that uh, we may get to see a lot of our um, viewers from Austin, but. Um, you know, here's Jeffrey from Austin, Texas, and he's doing it. He's doing it in a brand new Tesla Model Y. And, um, you know, we will keep obviously in touch and you will let us know if you made the right call or not, maybe six, eight months down the road. Uh, I definitely will. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks for watching this episode of Behind the Wheel on the Ride Chair Guy. We've been doing these interviews for the past six months with very successful drivers from different cities around the nation. Click here for another episode. Make sure you subscribe and turn on all notifications for other episodes of Behind the Wheel as well as amazing content on our channel.